Creatures of the Night, it's your girl Tati. Let's talk about season five, episode eight of Dark Side of the Ring, Sensational Sherry. For this episode, we do have Jim Cornette, Eric Bischoff, Jake Snake Roberts, Medusa, Rock and Robin, her best friend Kathy, her son Jared, and his father, which was her first husband. Now, Sherry did grow up without a father, so her and her mother did bond over professional wrestling, and them going to live shows made her realize that she wanted to be a professional wrestler. Now, fast forward to 1974, where she meets Jake Snake Roberts while he was a referee, and they began a relationship on and off for about five years. Now, when the producers asked him if he was in love with her, his response was that he was in love with something. Not necessarily saying what that something is, but I thought that was an interesting response about if he loved her. However, what he knew that she loved professional wrestling and that she was willing to do anything to get into the business. So at 16 years old, she approaches Grizzly Smith, which was the father of Jake Snake Roberts, who was also a promoter. And he told her, come back when you are 21. So she moves on to New Orleans in 1976, where she meets her future first husband, where she is a dancer. Now they, do, they never say the word stripper, but based off of the reenactment, it looks like she was a stripper. Now they, they end up moving with each other not too long into their relationship. And he realized not that long after that she was into partying and doing drugs. And somehow they still end up getting married and she got pregnant. Now, the baby's born, she's still wanting to pursue professional wrestling, and after three months, uh, she decides that being a mother isn't for her and that she's going to leave to go to Memphis and pursue her career in professional wrestling. She goes to Memphis and she continues to dance for money. Now, when the time was right, she was 21 years old, she ends up going over to Grizzly Smith, and the first thing Grizzly did was slap her across the face real hard, and her response was, is that all you got? And she told him that she was ready to be a professional wrestler. Now, she's now starting off the career um, under Grizzly Smith and she's wrestling and she's making friends and she became friends with Rockin' Robin, who is also the daughter of Grizzly Smith. And she realized that she is also getting into a lot of parties and doing a lot of drugs and getting herself into somewhat of trouble. Now, after a little bit of time, uh, Grizzly Smith is, approaches her and said, hey, you know, I think it's best for you to go over to Medusa school to go and train. And she ends up leaving to go to Medusa school. Now, according to Jake Snake Roberts, Jake says, even though she was 21 years old, the real reason, well, part of the real reason why he didn't want her there, wanted her to go to Medusa school was because she was too young for him. And he preferred uh, women who were much, well, let me not say women, girls, instead of women. Everybody knows that Grizzly Smith uh, was a piece of shit. And then he ended up recommending her to go to another piece of shit, Fabulous Moolah. And she was very, very strict um, at her school. And unlike all the other girls who were at the school where she was able to pretty much keep a firm grip on those girls, she was not able to stop Sherry from going to parties and doing drugs. So she ended up kicking her out of school. Now she's out of the school, she's looking for other territories to go to to wrestle. But at this time, her ex-husband was um, looking for her. He ended up hiring an investigator, a private investigator, to find her, uh, basically look around to see where she was being booked um, to wrestle, and he was looking for her. Now, the issue was is that obviously there's a baby involved and he's raising his baby alone and she want he wants her to come back so they can raise the baby together or at least have some help with um their um son however three big ass dudes end up confronting him one day and told him to leave sherry alone or else so at this point he stopped pursuing trying to get in contact with sherry um because he realized that the baby needs at least one parent so it was not worth trying to keep in contact with her he was just going to wait until she contacted him now sherry went from mid-south to japan and then going on to awa where medusa looked up to her and wanted to be just like her now she ends up going to sherry's house where they got a chance to get to know each other a little bit more and sherry shared with her 
that her son was away. And at first she didn't understand why, what she meant by away, but then she realized that she had pretty much left her son behind so she can pursue a career in professional wrestling. Now, here's the part of the show where they show her son, Jared. Jared is in very bad shape uh, and he cannot speak well, so they do have subtitles for you to understand what it is that he is saying. Um, unfortunately, he had lost majority of his tongue. And so when he speaks, it's not clear. Uh, some people on the show stated that um, he has had cancer in the past and they believe that he currently has cancer and that's why he looks and sounds so bad on the show. But it looks like he really wanted to, you know, speak about his mom on this episode and participate. So kudos to him for despite not being in the best of health for participating on this episode. Now, here in the episode, he's pretty much letting everyone know that despite how bad it looks of her not being in his life the way people feel like a mother should, that they should not judge her for leaving him and that he believes that she was a great mother and he couldn't pick the better father for him who was there for him every step of the way. Now, there was a point where they ended up telling him who his mother was. He didn't know who his mother was until he was about three years old. They also showed um, her on TV as Sherry. So he got a chance to see who she was on TV. Now, the dad, also sent uh, him over for a week to spend time with her and on the second day she returned him right back to the dad because it was just too much for him now soon later she joins the wwf and she's feuding with moolah who had already had the title for almost 30 years she ends up beating moolah and uh is champion now she ends up working with rock and robin after becoming champion they work together for the first time on a dark match and then from there they're going from city to city working with each other and also doing televised shows where they're wrestling with each other you know the same old same old and um she it really enjoyed working with Sherry. They were literally working seven days a week, every week. So with her being a WWF and her being champion, it was going to be even more less likely that she was going to spend any time with her son. And the only time that he kind of spent time with her, his mom was when she was on TV. Now, Jake the Snake Roberts says that she was an emotional wreck. And because they were working so hard every single day, and because she was a woman, she felt like she had to work even harder so she could be accepted amongst a, a mostly male-driven male sport. So what she would do, um, I guess looking for acceptance, is drinking, partying, doing drugs with the guys. And um, unfortunately, that wasn't a good thing. Now, Robin and Sherry ends up having a match um, at a state fair. And during this match, she ends up kicking Robin in the throat. Um, Robin said that prior to the match, she was really high and she didn't really seem too coherent, but she didn't make a big deal out of it because Sherry was usually high whenever they had matches. But this time she kicked her in the throat and she was unable to breathe for some minutes. They had to have the referees and people tend to her to help her to breathe on her own. And once they met in the locker room, uh, Sherry was really upset and she ended up apologizing to Robin about what happened. But at this point, Robin realized that even though uh, Sherry was used to wrestling while she was high, it didn't really seem like it would be safe to continue to wrestle with her at that point. Now, during the 1990s, she was one of the most, um, you know, popular women in WWF. However, Vince McMahon didn't really care too much about women wrestling and at that point he ended up putting her as a manager with several big name stars in the WWF which was interesting because she made more money as a manager than as a wrestler so regardless of who she was in the ring with she became more and more famous and she did an amazing job as a manager now as jared got older he was able to go on the road with her from time to time and the crazy thing about it is he really wanted to spend time with his mom however he saw her doing a lot of things that if he were to tell people that she would stop having him um, being on the road with her so he kept his mouth 
quiet so that he can continue to spend some time with his mom, even if it is for a few um, days or weeks on the road out of the year. Now she was on a lot of drugs and she was taking muscle relaxers because she was in a lot of pain. And although she was wrestling less during this time, she was still taking a lot of bumps and she had back problems that she was taking muscle relaxers for. Now you guys know, the steroid trials was a huge deal. And even though this was really about the steroids, that was um, the steroid issue that was going on for that trial, they also began to test for other things as well. And they tested Sherry several times. She failed every single test. Every time they tested her, by 1993, they decided to let her go. After being fired from the WWF, she goes home and she's calling around different promotions to see who would hire her. Now, Jim Cornette gives her a call and tell her to come all down to Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Now, for those of you who didn't know, uh, Jim Cornette obviously was a manager and the first wrestler that he ever managed was Sherry Martell. Now, Sherry goes on over to Smoky Mountain Wrestling and she's not just there to be a manager, she's there to actually be in the ring. And you know, she's been doing um, that, she's been taking that manager role for several years now. Now she's back into the ring and her back is not in great condition and she's struggling in the ring and even out the ring just to walk. And she's taking more and more uh, medicine, especially muscle relaxers to help deal with that pain. And unfortunately, Jim Cornette had to let her go because she just was not ready um, to be in the ring or just do anything where she would just be in even worse shape. Now, Eric Bischoff gives her a call to come on down to WCW. And he says, now at the time, he didn't know why WWF had let her go. All he knew was that she was a legend and a really great manager and wanted to bring her on by to WCW. And there she managed Harlem Heat. And you guys already know, um, you know, they had that infamous moment where Harlem Heat, uh, Mean Gene Okerlund and Sherry Martell, they all was um, cutting a promo. Well, Booker T was cutting a promo on, y'all know, Hulk Hogan. And basically, I'll just put it this way, called him a Negro. That's just the best way I could put it. <laughs> now, um, she's there. She's still doing drugs. She's still doing alcohol. And um, unfortunately, he's still back with the muscle relaxers to deal with her pain. And Eric Bischoff said that he ultimately had to let her go because she was not presentable to be on TV because she looked high as fuck and she really couldn't perform to the best of her abilities. Now, Medusa does bring up a good point and says, if that was true, the reason why he let her go, then he should have let go a whole bunch of guys that was on that roster that was on the very same um, situation, um, just like her, where they all was high as fuck on drugs and popping pills and all that other stuff. You should have let them guys go too and not just Sherry. Now, at this point, she's depressed. She lost um, her job and losing, you know, not just WWF, but WCW. Where could else could she go in terms of the really big promotions during that time? Now, while she was at WCW, she did get married um, to a man named Robert. And according to her friends and family on this episode, they said Robert was um, a shitty person that made sure that she stayed away from her friends and family, like I guess in a controlling way. He was really used to her being on the road and, um, you know, making a lot of money. And then all of a sudden she loses her job and now she's at home and he has to stay and be with her all the time. And he made sure the family stayed away. That's their words, not mine. And obviously they didn't like him for that. Now, Jerry said the last time he actually saw his mom was during the 2006 Hall of Fame where she was being inducted. And they were saying that low key, that she truly wasn't happy with being inducted into the Hall of Fame because to her, that meant that her wrestling career was absolutely over since she was being inducted. Now, she still wanted to pursue um, doing things in wrestling in other ways if she could not be in the ring. Now, fast forward to June 14, 20, uh, 2007, she's on the phone with her best friend, Kathy, and she says, look, I don't want to speak too soon, but WWE is saying that they will pay for my back surgery, and once I am healed from um, that surgery, then I can train the girls at WWE. Now, she was so happy and optimistic about it because in that way, she would still be, um, you know, in the professional wrestling world. 
However, on June 15th, the very next day, while she was on her porch on her rocking chair, she ended up collapsing and passed away. The Alabama police did investigate and they saw that, well, she passed away from an overdose. And um, it was really, really unfortunate that even though she seemed so optimistic to continuing somewhat of her career in professional wrestling, that she was still going back to, you know, self-medicating with these drugs and, and ended up overdosing on Oxy, which is really unfortunate. Now, the moment she passed away, her best friend did call Jake and Jake came over uh, and just drove a couple of hours over to go um, see Sherry. He went to the funeral, had a speech at the funeral. He said he was so fucked up on all the drugs that he took that he barely remembered that day. And all he could think of was that she was his best friend and why would she leave him in this world? And it was really, really sad to see how Jake was truly felt about her, even though earlier he was saying that he wasn't in love with her. But at that moment, talking about how she lost her life, he seemed to show so much love for her. Like it was just a, a beautiful moment. Now, um, I'll say this though, Jared ends up ending off the episode showing letters that he received from his mom throughout the years. And um, he talked about how he's grateful that his father and stepmother raised him. And he also said that his stepmother was almost like a tag team partner to Sherry because when uh, Sherry could not be there for him. She stepped up and was able to take over. And I like how he used that analogy. They even showed a stepmother who comes and hugs him um, on the show. And she said that, you know, she thanks well to Sherry for sharing her son with him. This was a really um, informative episode. I think a lot of people are going to be surprised to see this side of Sherry. And um, I think it was nicely done in a way where it's like, I know people could be really judgy about a mother leaving their child to pursue something because I think a lot of people are more um, used to seeing mothers pretty much give up on their dreams so they can be mothers. And this was just the other way around. I'm pretty sure if she can live life again, she probably do it the very same way. And um, it was just so interesting to see um, a woman who were able to make a huge huge impact in professional wrestling. Now for next episode, we do have about the Sandman. This is gonna be so fucking nuts. I already know it's gonna be absolutely nuts. I can't wait to see it. So guys, come back next week for another review on Dark Side of the Ring. I'll see you guys then. Bye.